Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of Beer Lay and as I said last time we will be reviewing the Victory Ale here from Bateman's Brewery. Now Victory Ale is from England. Is that supposed to be ironic? Well it says on the back label here it's brewed to celebrate Admiral Nelson and his crew. It's a powerful pale copper colored with a peppery aroma and goes with stew and gravy dishes. Mmm gravy. Mm, gravy. Let's check this bottle out, learn a little bit more history about this thing, get this puppy opened up and start tasting more, don't we? Bateman's Brewery, located in Waynefleet, Lincolnshire, was founded by George Bateman. Pictured here on the bottle in a cool hat next to his big ship. Okay, maybe that's not really him. Hard to tell. Has been brewing craft beer since 1874. Wait, 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 wait. Craft beer since 1800? Hasn't craft beer only been around and popular for the last like 15, 20 years or something? Like I'm, I'm gonna need some more explanation on this. Well, yeah, actually that's what it says on the website at least. George Bateman sold his farm to buy up all the brewing equipment that he needed and just started brewing. It's actually quite an interesting story and is very similar to many other craft brewers in recent years that have given up their desk jobs and pursued their passion for brewing. Anyway. With the motto, Good Honest Ales, I think you might know what to expect. But you might be surprised. Their specialty is cast conditioned ales. Sorry, just need to interject one more time. Last month while I was in London, I accidentally or at least unknowingly picked up this bottle conditioned ale right here. I'll be doing a review on this one as well in good time. It's actually a really quite interesting story of how they do the whole brewing process and whatnot, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, back to story. But they also specialize in brewing other people's beer for them as well. Back in the early 1900s, the brewery was also brewing Guinness and Bass beer on site. In this latest 2012, a Norwegian brewer called No Gene O, definitely butchered that name, was brewing at Bateman's as well. There's even more quirky things about this brewery, but let's get this thing opened up first. Come on, man. So real quick, just as a disclaimer, while I was in London about a month ago, uh, I was in a grocery store and just picked up a couple random bottles of beer. I'm not in any way sponsored by Bateman's in any way, shape, or form. I've never tried this beer, but already I haven't even opened this thing up, and I'm really excited about this thing. Just because it's the history and the brewery and everything just sounds really, really interesting. So let's get this thing opened up. I don't have an opener, but I have this nice bicycle pump here. Let's see if that'll do the job. It has. All right, let's get this guy pouring. Man, that is a nice looking beer. It is a filtered beer, so there's no sediments. There's a very, very, very small head on this thing. Ales typically don't foam up quite a lot. Uh, this is definitely, like it said on the bottle, a very coppered colored beer. This is a very beautiful color. I really, really like that. It's got a very nice copper, almost reddish type of a look to it. It smells, smells, wow. It smells darker almost, but it's got like, it's definitely got like a peppery, peppery kind of a smell to it. Whoa. Whoa. Dude, <laughs> this is a good beer. <laughs> I really like this. Wow. That is awesome. All right. Oh, man. That is so delicious. Like the, the tartness at the beginning is like, oh, man, it's really good, but it's like not overwhelming at all. Ales are normally drinking not super super cold but like when this thing is cold it's really wow it's really refreshing all right stop halt let's look at what bateman says this beer should taste like so their description on their website says a pale copper colored rewarding beer brewed with pale and crystal malts and hopped with english goldings and american liberty hops yeah <laughs> The aroma booms peppery hops and bitter oranges balanced with fresh bread maltiness. Hops and fruit dominate the palate, while the finish has a sappy malt tart fruit and lingering hop bitterness. All right, so it's there's definitely a lot of flavors going on in this thing. At the beginning, it is like this sweet kind of a citrusy, but it's like it says, this like tartiness. And then at the end, it's like really mellow and you just get this nice blooming of hops at the end. Ah, oh, it's just, I don't know, it's, oh man, it's really good. It's really good. So let's talk more about this brewery because I didn't have enough time to talk about it at the beginning. So quick rundown, they offer three classic cast beers, which are gonna be coming in, in kegs, including their most popular and most awarded Triple XB. They offer five classic bottled beers, which is including the Victory Ale that I have here. 
We've got four seasonal beers, one for every season. They have three specialist bottled beers. And they also have monthly kind of rotational seasonal beers as well. So they have at least 15 different types of beer that they brew. Now let's get on to the awards that they have won. So on the bottle, it does say gold medal winning beers and they're not lying. Go to the website, which I'll uh, put a link down in the description. You will see not only does the brewery have a handful of awards that they've won, but all the different beers that have won awards as well is just astounding. So the awards, I'm just gonna talk about the victory on the awards that they've won. 2015, the British Bottler Institute gave this thing award. The Drinks International Beer Challenge awarded the Victory Ale a prize in 2007. And the Victory Ale also earned some type of award from the campaign of Real Ale Champion Beer of Britain. It did that in 1989, 2009, and 2010. So, still got more stuff to talk about about the brewery. Last time when I was doing the IPI, I said I would kind of do a comparison between these two beers, and they're not really to compare. Although, one is an India Pale Ale, and this is an ale. They're not, that's pretty much, the name is pretty much the only distinction between the two. The IPA was definitely lighter in color. It wasn't this dark. It was a lot hoppier. This is, this is very mellow. There's not that overpowering bitter taste that you get a lot of times from IPAs. The IPA was just, was just very hoppy, very bitter, very flowery. This is a lot mellower. You definitely get a lot more of the malty taste coming through. So, the difference between the IPA and this ale are just the name and that's pretty much it. All right, so back more about the brewery. So I'm gonna get a quote that I found uh, while doing my research. When George Bateman first originally did this, like I said, he was a farmer. And so he had a big farmhouse, which was like 200 yards, it says here, from the brewery. So it says on fair day, which was held twice a year, the farmers would come to the Salem house, which is where he lived apparently, to pay for the beer the workers had consumed the previous six months. It was very common for this payment not to be made in cash, but with meat and potatoes. Once payment had been made, we would invite the farmers into our kitchen for a massive feast. This tradition continued until 1930. So I just think that's really interesting. Like back in the day, you know, instead of paying everything for money, you'd be like, hey, you know, have a beer. I, you don't need to pay me now. Wait six months, bring me some meat, bring me some potatoes. Let's have a giant feast and a party. But let's be honest, there's probably also beer there as well. It's like the British ale Thanksgiving. Bateman's is not just a brewery. They also own many public houses. It says here that they own 69 of them, 23 which are situated in Boston. Now public house, I looked this up because I didn't know what it was. A public house is simply a gathering place and house where people can come and just drink beer. Sounds like a pub. Oh, that's where the word pub comes from. Pub comes from public house. I didn't know that. Sorry, maybe I'm just ignorant American. So yeah, so Bateman's, this dude sells his farm, starts up a brewery, invites all of his buddies to come over, drink his beer and have a big festival, opens up a bunch of pubs, brews some really badass beer, craft beer from 1874, was it? It's George Bateman, man. He was like the original gangster, hipster, craft brewer, boss. So let's talk about this bottle. There's, there's more interesting stuff that I just found. Okay, so on the bottle, on the back, right? You've got a quick story, you got, you know, how much alcohol, which is 6.0%, by the way. There's some like legal terminology, you know, like it's a product of, it says that it's a beer and that it contains barley. And all these, all these things are translated in obviously English because it's from England, I believe that is Italian, we have, we have French, Spanish, Portuguese, and then Norwegian languages, so I'm assuming either Swedish or Norwegian or Finnish, but, but no German. <laughs> and I just find that really funny because, you know, like, like they're concerned about the Spanish, they're concerned about the Italians, concerned about the Scandinavians, but the Germans, <laughs> Screw the Germans, man. They know what beer is. They don't need to be warned about this stuff. All right, guys, I'm just gonna uh, finish this guy off real quick here. I've had a lot of fun doing this review. This beer has been really good. I can definitely recommend it. The Victory Ale from Bateman's. If you guys liked this review as much as I did making it for you guys, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment down below 
you guys ever had this thing let me know what you guys think of it if you had other batemans let me know what you think of those let's have a nice little discussion about beer down in the comment section but until the next time we'll see you guys later prost